All right, welcome to Josh Anderson Art. Um, just to catch you up to speed, I'm in a project where daily I challenge myself to draw an old cartoon, sort of a nostalgic 80s or 90s cartoon that me and my brother used to watch as kids. Today's cartoon is Gizmo Duck from DuckTales. So I'd love comments and stuff about your favorite cartoons from particularly the 80s and 90s, but if you're younger than that, like what are, what's something you're watching these days? And do you remember DuckTales and who is your favorite character? I usually try to draw my favorite character from these shows, but some of these shows I didn't really watch that much, and so I don't actually have a favorite character so much, but DuckTales is one that like, I remember this coming on every single day, and we watched a lot of it, but I can't really remember having a favorite character from it. Um, so today I was just looking for a character to draw, and I saw a picture of Gizmo, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember him, kind of, barely. He looks fun to draw, so that's why I'm drawing him. As I've mentioned in other videos, but you probably haven't watched them, most likely. Um, I am picking these cartoons, like this, the actual frame to draw as a screenshot from the show. Um, and I'm fully aware that you can Google anything and find some kind of image of almost anything out there. But what I've found is you can easily get a lot of fan art or even advertising art is a little bit different than the actual characters were in the cartoons. And like, sometimes it's actually better. Like they for advertisements or something, they spent more time and did more effects like lighting effects and stuff on them. But really what I'm after is the character exactly how I remember them from the TV show. The best way to do that is actually capture it from the TV show. Thanks to YouTube, it's, it's a possibility these days. Not too long ago, it would have been really hard to do this. And um, Before DVD, like I remember in my teens, like a lot of the cartoons I like trying to catch them on, on VHS and, and, uh, with the VCR. And, like you knew when they were going to come on, so you could be all set and just hit record. And I think it was really hard because I'd always try to pause the recording on the commercials because I did not want commercials. And I actually had a pretty good collection of like Alvin and the Chipmunks and Looney Tunes on VHS and then realized 10, 15 years later that I was never going to watch all of those. And so I got rid of, pretty sure I got rid of all the VHS recordings of those but then the next thing i got one time i wanted to do i had this idea to do a, like maybe a watercolor of a scene from princess bride and i had the dvd 
and you know like a lot of players like you can pause it but after a while they go into sleep mode or i don't know like you're taking long enough to draw it that you don't want to leave it on the screen you want to watch something else or whatever and so just pausing it to do the do a drawing or something just wasn't really the best and so like i remember oh yeah like i have it stick it in my laptop on and then do a screenshot well apparently the movie companies or whatever were on to that idea real quick and i don't know i don't know what they're afraid of by you being able to screenshot the the db or the uh yeah the dvd software on laptops and computers and stuff does not allow you to do a screenshot right off of the dvd it's crazy you can screenshot anything on your computer but that will just come up as a big gray box or at least it did back when i was trying it and so i realized that wasn't a possibility i actually did a painting one time of jesus from the passion by and the way I did that one was I paused the frame that I wanted and I took a digital picture of it, printed that, and then painted off of that. So by the time you've, one, see it on a TV screen, two, take a picture of it, and three, print it, like you've gone through three sort of generations of, you just really lose color, you lose resolution, and in the end you have a pretty poor reference photo like the the Jesus one I found out later was uh, I even I think when I took the picture I didn't realize I was slightly at an angle and so that messes up perspective and your perspective is ruined and <laughs> the colors were horrible and here I was trying to match colors to a photograph off of a screen and so yeah, the other end like Jesus's skin turned out really pink and <laughs> Not, that's not a good way for artists to get their reference photos. And then along comes, around 2005, along comes YouTube. And originally, like, the only thing I really knew to use YouTube for was looking up silly videos, like stupid things people do or stuff like that. And then, oh yeah, I can upload my own crazy, silly things I do or videos I make with friends. And, but over the years, you start to realize like, oh wow, everything's on YouTube. Like people, somebody somewhere has uploaded just about everything you can ever think of on YouTube. <laughs> so here we are now in 2018 and just about any cartoon you can imagine, everything we ever watched, someone has uploaded a version on YouTube. Now we're still at a place though when quality is not that great. And I understand like whoever's uploading these, like they're not, the, they're usually not copyright holders, the studios that produced them, um, things like that. It's just usually fans and one, a lot of people probably don't even know how to upload in really high resolution. And two, I think um, when you do that, I think, I think you might get busted quicker. Because I've noticed, um, not so much with a lot of the cartoons, but this one, especially DuckTales, almost everyone who's uploaded anything, they've done it, they've skewed the picture, or they've put a bunch of other crazy, weird graphics all around the picture. And I think that throws off like the bots that track down copyright infringement stuff, I guess. I'm assuming that's why they do that. So anyway, bottom line is to say that it's, it's, it's really hard to get a good high quality picture of characters. Like I, as someone who's just drawing them, like I need to be able to see the lines and if it, anything is below 480p, like I just can't even, I can't see the lines clear enough. And you end up essentially just guessing like what lines are, where ones will go, and it's just it's a horrible drawing that way. Um, so 480p is good enough. Obviously, 
high def would be the best. Uh, the one I'm drawing from here is um, from a channel wow. called Saturday Morning Rewind. And they just did a top 15 DuckTales characters. And we're doing the 1987 version, the original. Apparently there's a reboot of everything now. <laughs> I don't really keep up with it all, but I'm not interested in the reboots, really not. I just think, I don't know. I think animators, they probably have their own nostalgia and go, oh, DuckTales is one of my favorites and like, now that I'm an animator, like I can help to reboot this thing. And really, I just, I just think it'd be better off if they just came up with original characters. So reboots always are different, and a lot of little nuanced ways. It's like when I was mentioning in another video, like one of the things I enjoy about all of my nostalgic '80s early 90s cartoons is the uh is this line there innocence cartoons is sort of the innocence and I realize every generation that goes by things get a little less innocent so even my cartoons my nostalgic ones probably aren't as innocent as you know way back in the 30s and stuff like that but it's just kind of sad like people see the need to put in sexual humor and innuendos into kids shows and especially the kids movies so they can get their own laughs out of it, I guess. I don't know. But to me, that really just, it ruins kind of the heart of what these shows were and the characters. And you know, I, like I was a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, but like even, I don't know, they went to the movies, even that, that and I like that the original Turtles movies, I liked them, but even those were kind of a little more adulty than the good old Saturday morning version that we would watch all the time. And I don't know. Every time you do that, you just change the characters a little bit. And I just wonder why. They wouldn't just come up with, like, make up your own thing. Like, if you're going to change them, just every time they, they try to make, like, a CGI version of Smurfs or Garfield or Chipmunks, just don't know why they have to change them so much. Of course, that's just my opinion. You might like it. Yeah, that's pretty much Gizmo Duck. That's all. Okay. And with this series, I'm 
pencil them in first, and then I'm, I'm sticking to all the same the same medium for this whole series, which is I ink with a paper mate flare, which is actually a pretty cheap pen, but I've been kind of pleasantly surprised with the line quality I can get out of it. And then after I ink it, I'm going to go scan it real quick because I found that I'm actually coming out with these really cool, like, um, outline drawings of these characters. And I'm going to, later, I'm going to take all these and make them into, like, a coloring book for my kids. So I'll run off and scan it real quick, and then I'll come back and I'll color with colored pencil. And honestly, colored pencil is... Probably not my strongest suit, and so I'm kind of actually using this to practice that too. Practice coloring quickly because I'm also doing these characters on my break at work. I'm trying to do them very quickly. Actually, I think this pen, I need to put you the different one. I think it's starting to get a little worn, uh, which causes my lines to be more equal weight. It's not responding as much to my pushing and pulling, which I'd like for, I'd li I'd like, you, like you like to be able to have your pen respond to the like nuanced movements so you can get really varied line thicknesses, which are really cool looking in the drawing. Not sure why a lot of these cartoons were broadcast at certain times of the day. This one I always remember being when we got home from school. Probably reruns because it's actually a, from, I think I saw 1987 is when this series started and I think we watched it mostly in the 90s. I don't think I realized how old this show was originally. Sorry if I don't talk a lot. It's a little harder for me to be able to talk and draw at the same time. I'm using an eight and a half by 11 sketchbook. When I started the series, I was using a, like a six by nine and a half one or something, something like that. And my art teachers have always told me this and I'm really finding it out on my own that when you draw on small paper you're you're confining yourself and all of a sudden you don't realize that you're actually shortening limbs and stuff like that to get them to fit on the page um, and sadly one of my favorite characters i drew i was drawing optimus prime by the time i I got done sketching it all out, I realized I didn't have enough room for his legs. So I kind of had to shorten his legs, which is horrible. And like these drawings, if I had more time on them, I could go back and erase and start over. And I, like with that one, I would have had to really start from scratch because I started his head in the wrong place. <laughs> And most of that's usually you solve that with your initial pre like light rough pre sketch. Like I've, I've been trying to do that before I start the video, so there's a little something started when you when viewers come along. Also to get a better thumbnail image. 
Uh, but that sketch is, is really for feeling out like where all the parts of the character are and make sure they fit on the page. Sort of get rough relationships to each other. It's a real light, real loose sketch. And then go back, and that's when I usually start the videos now, and go back with tighter detail, fill in everything, kind of get them exactly where I'm going to have them when, I, when it comes time to ink. I'm going to try to switch pens and see what happens. It's kind of funny, I ordered Papermate pens thinking I was, I thought I was ordering something different, and not only was the pin different, but I, they, they gave me a, a box of them. I thought I was just ordering like one pin, which is cool because that one of the difficulties I've always found with drawing that this actually comes out in a lot of different ways um, is my frugalness. Is like I grew up in a family like parents who were extremely frugal, um, and we were we were not poor, but we were a little tight with money growing up. And so that filtered down through how we treated everything growing up. Like we reused things as much as possible before we threw them away, before we could go buy a new whatever. We always fixed things when they broke instead of just buying a new one. And when it comes to drawing, like my parents couldn't afford to always buy a new sketch pad for me and with someone like me who drew as much as i did that would have been a lot i would have been busting through sketchbooks like nobody's business um, and so what i did most of the time was i drew on the backs of worksheets like my classes at school they always had like a recycle bin so you throw your test in there and you're done or whatever and to me that was just like a gold mine of blank paper, like copy paper to draw it on the back sides of all of those. So like 90% of all my old drawings are in the backs of school worksheets. But also that mentality and that kind of scarcity mentality also made me squish as much as I could onto paper. And so I would, my doodles would just cover every square inch of a piece of paper which was fun for me and i enjoyed it but looking back like the the end product that i created the art is i don't know some people might think it's as fun to look at as i do but i think most people will look at it and it's just too much like they don't even know where to put their eyes on the paper and so then they just they don't even really like to look at it it's really unfortunate because there's so many cool little things in there and fun things to find. And like, so now, like most of my body artwork as a kid and a lot of my adult life too is stuff that's not really sellable. Like I'm never going to be able to sell that artwork. Probably. And I wish I had growing up and stuff just... Now and then, it doesn't have to be all the time, but I wish I had concentrated on more finished pieces of art instead of just always doodles. There's a lot I could have done to learn more and stretch that I didn't do. I have this idea though. I think I'm going to start an auction of all of my bold art because I kept almost everything or not an auction, but I'm going to sell it off for really cheap because we are running out of space to store stuff at home and and it's all sitting in drawers, you know, just nobody's ever seeing it. So I had this idea. If I sell it for even like $2 a piece or something, there's enough that would kind of be a lot of money for me, but it also would get it out of my house we get the art into some hands that are in front of eyes that might appreciate it instead of just being in a drawer. And here's the cool thing for the purchaser. It just might become worth something someday. 
it's kind of wishful thinking i know but like i was really inspired by a story i read in a bathroom reader <laughs> uncle john's bathroom reader about a person who was at a yard sale and they found a crappy piece of art but they kind of liked it so they went ahead and bought it hung it on their wall they bought it for probably ten dollars not even that much maybe turns out the artist wasn't famous at that time but they did become famous later guess how much that piece of artwork is worth now i think it's like something like two million dollars <laughs> now isn't that cool so i'm offering you the chance it's almost like a lottery ticket buy a piece of my artwork super cheap won't cost you anything you don't even have to hang it up put it in a drawer somewhere it's not going to take up much space at your house it's only one piece of artwork or however many you want to buy maybe even wrap it in cellophane or something like that so it doesn't get doesn't decay or whatever <clears throat> and sit on it like as an investment super cheap investment that could possibly yield some huge return for you it's a gamble for sure but i don't know it's kind of a cool idea i mean like i could even see myself like taking that chance on other people's artwork just buy one two pieces of their art even if it's their lesser quality stuff or whatever Let's see what happens just might be sitting on a gold mine all right i'm just gonna give a, a really cool outer line on him just to give it a finished look If you're just tuning in to Josh Anderson Art Channel, um, just to fill you in, I'm just an artist. I work as a graphic designer who loves cartoons. I always have. Wanted to be an animator as a kid. Kind of shifted focus into actually what I really want to do is be a cartoonist, a comic strip artist. I have a single panel gag strip called junk drawer and i have a serial strip with characters called carrot and rough about a dog and a rabbit and i am I'm actively drawing the junk drawer strips to try to build up kind of a sizable body i have like the ideas for it written like on in different sketchbooks all over the place but taking the time to ink those up and make them presentable it just takes a lot of time i'll have those available to show in a while not too long i'm working on a website right now um, so anyway like eventually i'm gonna have, i'm working on a wix website and when that gets up i can share that link and stuff but right now i've already started a blog called josh anderson art blog it's at wordpress I think it's joshandersonartblog.wordpress.com. Um, and there you can just sort of get to know like who I am as an artist, like what inspires me, who I am. I've done a lot of different style blogs there, but like one is like, like I have one called Fanatical Doodler Series where I just share different art that I've done over the years it shows how crazy of a doodler I am okay so there he is inked looks pretty cool yeah I'm gonna go scan this so if you can just stare at my color pencils okay. and I'll give you some music to listen to and I'll be right back wait okay. Before I do that, I want to erase the pencil lines. <laughs> yep. 
I still use just a regular pencil to do my sketch in and like I could use a non-photo blue and maybe I wouldn't even need to erase. I don't have a lot of experience with non-photo blue pencils. I know a lot of artists use them, especially animators. I'm not sure how it looks if you don't erase it, but I still just, I use a regular whatever pencil that's on hand. Most of them are ones I got from a dentist as a kid. I have a million of those. <laughs> then uh, erase it. So then that's the final inked version. I'm going to go scan that real quick. Hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> right now as this is live right now I don't have a single watcher but might get some views later that's who I'm talking to color pencils dull really quick which is one of my least favorite things about color pencils and I have an electric sharpener here, so you might hear periodically this really annoying sound that I would mute if I knew how. Also, when you freeze a frame, like on a YouTube video, it's hard to, a lot of times the colors don't show up all that great. So I have like another still to kind of, hopefully kind of match the colors little bit who knows if this one's even brighter the character like this it might not even be the animators might not even been that vigilant with the color choices I think I've mentioned before, like if I had more time, I would probably spend a little more time with these co with the coloring. I'm just doing this on my lunch break. Because the beak is yellow. It's like an orange yellow. This is pretty close. All right, plug your ears, turn your speaker. On. Also, my color pencils I have here 
They're just really cheap Crayola color pencils. And so not a lot of color choices. Actually, surprisingly a lot for how cheap the set was. But the quality of the pencils is probably not the greatest ever. Black, but I know the animators do a lot of things with black. Use shades of gray or even dark purple. Because let's look at what that looks like. Yeah, see, we're going to lose our the details of our tire. Let's just use dark gray here. I think I was watching something about Daffy Duck and how since he's all black, like they had to resort to white lines in most of the frames of the show. <laughs> Makes sense. You wouldn't be able to see lines at all. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let's see what color his buttons are. Pretty much it. Huh, am I missing anything? Looks good. Come back tomorrow.